Uh, this is a, a few slides about a project that we started at the beginning of the year. So it's a collaboration across a number of uh, companies in, in the UK. Um, the size was AEC Delta uh, Mobility. I'll talk a little bit about what that actually means in terms of what, the, what we're talking about in terms of the Delta and mobility. But it's a UK Innovate uh, funded project. Uh, to give a little bit of an introduction to the project itself, um, a little bit about sort of uh, almost philosophically what the problem we're trying to solve. There's some really interesting presentations today that uh, talk about very large data sets and sharing a lot of uh, three-dimensional information and BIM information around. So it's um, very relevant to what we're, we're tackling here. Um, a key uh, aspect behind this project actually is around uh, open source and making it open access. So the deliverables of this are actually a protocol which um, there will be reference implementations implemented as part of this project, but it's actually a, an open standard which hopefully others might uh, adopt or look at or uh, modify or collaborate on as well. Uh, and so then a few little bits on the, the, the project to date. So we're still at the early stages of the project, but there's some progress to, to talk about and maybe some uh, ideas of how, if anybody's interested, how they can maybe get involved as well to support. Um, so it's an 18 month long project, uh, started at February this year. So we're um, in this, uh, the, the halfway through the second quarter. I'll talk a little bit about what those sort of deliverables now are. Um, as I say, it's a funded grant project from the UK Innovate, part of the UK Industrial uh, a strategy change funds. There's a, uh, quite a big focus, obviously, at the moment around a lot of uh, uh, really interesting projects that can be funded through, certainly in the UK, um, around this subject of inefficiency in the construction industry, AC, you know, technology in the AC industry in general. Uh, the projects who are um, uh, the, sorry, the companies that are involved in this project, Bureau Happold, so um, that's, you know, I'm leading this from the Bureau Happold's uh, perspective. Um, academic partner, uh, UCL. Um, University College London, uh, 3D Repo, um, and Romberg Rail. So again, deliberately, we're looking at this being a, a solution that transcends across the entirety of the uh, construction supply chain. Um, so from contractor through to um, engineer, uh, architect, designer. Uh, and obviously, there's a sort of technological aspect to this. So talking some of the details in terms of software uh, implementation. So a lot of these um, companies are uh, also supporting open source uh, code development as well. So um, going to some details on that. That open uh, approach is really, really important, actually, because we sort of feel quite strongly that some of these issues that we're talking about here in terms of how we can collaborate more effectively cannot, uh, well, by definition, cannot be solved by uh, one individual, cannot be solved by one company, cannot be solved by um, even one country, really. Uh, so we're taking a very uh, open approach in this, and there'll be some links here in terms of where we're starting to uh, already, during the duration of the project, share the development that we're doing. We're really, really keen, if anybody's interested, to sort of reach out and chip in. And so there's already a, a number of people that aren't actually necessarily listed as uh, funded by the project who are already supporters, and we've already had some sort of interesting cross-industry uh, uh, workshops. Um, so it's really, really important, and we're really actively interested in anybody who's got any comments and, and questions or want to reach out and get involved. Um, and so that ilk, this is the, uh, the specifications as we develop them are all accessible on uh, GitHub, that's uh, AC Delta's web website there. Um, so all of the material here that we're developing, the specifications will be licensed under MIT license um, going forward as well. And so there's already some um, early stages of us developing the software requirements. So um, again, those will continue to evolve throughout the duration of the project. So um, really keen to get others sort of um, coming in and chipping into that. So what is the deliverables of the project? Well, uh, the key thing is going to be a specification for uh, a, uh, what we're calling a delta. And I'll talk a little bit about what that is, but it's the change between two, two models. So be a, a, an open specification for how anyone could implement that for, for their own software. Um, equally, how that can then interact with other, uh, other software. Uh, most likely, that's going to be through an um, open uh, REST API specification. Um, so any of these software can all actually talk to each other um, uh, remotely. Um, and then finally, um, that, well, those are the primary deliverables. It's going to be imp open implementations, that, uh, specifications that anyone else could implement. Uh, but equally, there are going to be um, open source re reference implementations as well, obviously, so we can actually you know, stress test these concepts and uh, run this on some real, real case studies as well. So that was all possibly a little bit abstract, so maybe try and make it um, in a little bit more spe specificity what is the problem we're trying to solve. And that's specifically saying, how do we share information? 
So how do we share information now? Well, um, at the moment, it's really you know input into the system is a file of some sort chunked up as a large piece of data. Maybe that's an entire Revit model. Maybe there's a QGIS model. Uh, maybe that's actually you know just a large IFC model. Whatever that is, is a large you know um, file uh, file of information that then gets modified. I might make some changes to that and then share back that modified model or that modified file in its entirety. Um, that's obviously quite challenging for a number of reasons. One is we're sharing these incredibly large file models around, sharing large data sets. Uh, so it's inefficient in terms of the data payloads that we're managing. Tracking changes then can then be problematic. How do I know actually what's come through into my inbox, what has actually changed? Um, that's inherently potentially inefficient for design coordination. So on the deltas, the very specific thing we're doing is starting to say, well, can we break open these files and not be transactional on a file-based um, level, but actually on the individual uh, parts of that file, whether that's objects or individual elements within that file. So very specifically, it's saying, can we break that open so then we can compare what came in, the input, with what's going out, and then very easily do a diffing, basically, very similar to how a lot of version control systems work, GitHub works in the software industry, and say, well, actually, it's only this part of it. Maybe that's one object. Maybe you've shared with me a large model and you've made modification to one column. And so actually, it's only the column that I need to share with you in a very efficient way. Obviously, there's an inherent uh, efficiency in terms of the payloads there. We're now able to potentially share much smaller amounts of information. Um, but also, actually, there's a whole lot of other additional benefits there to have co clearer coordination. You know what you're syn uh, synchronizing. Easier to track those changes. Uh, you get that for free. Um, very clear authorship and uh, history, uh, history tracking as well can be done down to the individual, individual modifications. So that's at the level of actually changing, um, I suppose, the, the, we're, the, what the information we're sharing is actually down at an individual uh, change level. Um, but actually also, how can we actually uh, ease the efficiency of, of sharing, uh, sharing that around? So this is actually looking at the sort of, um, this will be through a sort of REST API, so, um, but actually looking at how do we uh, collaborate as, as, I suppose, you know, human designers in the, in the built environment. So here's one scenario, which is, hello, I'm Alice. I've got some information coming in. Maybe it's some files. I then say, I'm going to pack it up this information as a stream, share that um, out as S0, and give access to my friend Bernard and say, hey, I've created this stream S0. Uh, do you want to have access? Do you want to have a look at it? Bernard then goes, hey, this is great. He then takes in some other results from somewhere else and, and makes actually a modif modification of that S0 and makes there another stream um, S1, which is may maybe some modification of that. Uh, he then can share that with two of his colleagues, which are Calvin and Dina. Ultimately, then Calvin goes, this is really good, and wants to then report out with uh, S1. The key thing here is that actually uh, Alice um, is control of necessarily giving access back to the original uh, S0 data. And the important part of that is that actually we're separating out how we're structuring the information rather than having one large honey pot of a whole load of information all in one big server in one big model, you can say, well, actually, this is all on one server. Or actually, you could say, no, no, these are actually on separate servers. So we're giving that flexibility to kind of say, decentralize, democratize how people are owning their own data, actually in control of who has access to which parts of, parts of the sub-models. So these, these pieces of information could be coordinated, but they don't necessarily all have to be in the same, in the same physical uh, model or on the same server. So that's the principle of what we're uh, developing. So that's the sort of delta part of it and the mobility part of it. As I say, it's all based on open source code, uh, data and protocols. Um, in addition to the documentation here, these are the three um, uh, reference code bases that we'll be, we are using to do the reference implementation. So that's um, Speckleworks, which is speckle.works there, um, bhom.xyz, Buildings and Habitats Object Model, um, and uh, 3drepo.com. So they're all open source under different uh, varying uh, open source licenses. Um, so they're all available. We're going to have a look at those now. And we're uh, part of the consortium is collaborating to then use those open source code to um, create a reference implementation. So a bit of an update where we are at now. Uh, so the first thing is we've been looking at the actual user requirements. And this is saying from actually what are the requirements that we actually need in order to make this actually useful and fit for purpose. So looking at actually the different actors in this, uh, whether it's a uh, uh, users from you know, a planner, a design coordinator, project manager, consultant engineer. I mean, a lot of the examples we saw today into the really interesting scenarios there to say, how could actually this model actually work to make that a much more um, efficient uh, and seamless um, collaboration? 
Uh, in addition to that, we're looking at what actually is this diffing that's going on? At what level are we diffing? And what are the comparisons that we're making? So there's a very simple sort of object level comparison. I've got this big collection of objects, um, sorry, collection level comparisons, big collection of objects here. I then modify some of those objects, and you're brutally just saying, those objects have changed. Don't know how they've changed, but hey, they've changed. Um, the second one is then saying, actually, looking at the uh, property level comparison, getting a bit more specification to say, actually, what's, what's changed in terms of, is it material property? Maybe I don't need to worry about that. Start to look at, look at uh, tolerances. So that's the sort of level we've got, got at. So we're sort of um, starting to look at the technical details there. Um, Equally, now we're starting to uh, implement some uh, initial prototypes in terms of transferring this data uh, live between the platforms. So just a very quick work in progress here, linking these uh, three platforms together. So on the left-hand side there is an implementation of the, the bomb running inside Grasshopper. So these are actually um, then linking across with adapters through to Speckle. Uh, and then a through to 3D repo. So that's a live adapter that allows you to then pass BIM objects directly live tethered across to those two platforms. Um, so this is a little animation just running here. You can see a very simple script starting to uh, change the number of levels. You can see that live updating in Grasshopper, obviously, but then clicking refresh in the speckle environment and then clicking refresh in the uh, 3D repo environment, you've got automatic updates of those, of those two models in those environments. Equally, because this is actually running on uh, a proper BIM, uh, BIM representations of data, this is not just geometry, uh, you can actually say, well, I'm changing a section size. That's so actually changing the diameter to a proper co you know, new column section. And you can see that's also live streaming across. As soon as you click um, refresh, you're getting those live updates. So that's early prototype work in progress. But you can imagine now some of the examples that we've seen earlier today in terms of ripping back some of the issues as well, pulling those back and being able to live um, coordinate between those different models. So that's a quick introduction, uh, a few of the links there. Um, and we are really, really interested in, uh, you know, this is you know, other people sort of coming in and saying actually uh, uh, feeding into the, to the resources that we're doing there. It's all open source. Um, so do take a look at those links. Thank you very much.